This is my third video on blood coagulation and we're focusing on diseases. The learning objectives, you should be able to explain how protein C slows clotting and why DVTs occur with factor V Leiden. DVTs are deep vein thrombosis. Describe how fibrinogen is converted to fibrin and, cro and is cross-linked. Describe the role of von Willebrand factor. Understand the genetics of factor VIII and factor IX deficiencies, which are X-linked. Know the most common bleeding disease and its genetics. Be able to tell what TPA is, tissue plasminogen activator, where it is made, and how its recombinant form is used. Here is a, a, a we're going to talk about activated protein C. Activated protein C is a uh, protein made by the liver, but it is uh, activated by a complex of thrombin and thrombomodulin. Once th excess thrombin is made to make a big clot, then that excess thrombin will bind to thrombomodulin. Some of it also gets inhibited by antithrombin-3. But remember, it only gets activated by heparin or he and, and unless you're taking heparin as a drug. Then the th thrombin-thrombomodulin complex activates protein C, which then binds to protein S, and then that forms this activated protein C. The activated protein C then proteolytically, it's a, it's a protease very much like thrombin, it likes arginines, will cleave factor 8A and kill it, and factor 7A, 5A and kill it. Uh, and then that slows the whole clotting cascade. So it's a feedback inhibition process to slow the clotting cascade. Factor V Leiden is a variant that causes hypercoagulability because, or clotting because this factor V cannot be inactivated by activated protein C. It's resistant to proteolysis by pro activated protein C. It has a mutation that involves an arginine to a glu glu glutamine. So factor V Leiden is the most common hereditary clotting problem uh, and that causes DVTs in people with Eurasian heritage, making them prone to deep vein thrombosis. So uh, you need to know the heritage of, of your people and know that uh, your patients and know that DVTs can occur uh, these people. And so this people is found in Leiden. Leiden is a city in the Netherlands where this was discovered. Uh, so. Fibrinogen goes to form fibrin when it's cleaved by thrombin, and thrombin makes a cleav cleavage in the alpha chain at arginine 16 and glycine. Don't need to know these numbers, just wanted to let you know we do know them. Beta, ar at beta chain at arginine and glycine as well. So these get cleaved, these little peptides that are in heavy, heavier uh, den denotation here are cleaved off, two alphas and two betas. Then th this aggregate into clots, to form uh, these bind together and forms a very loose clot. And then that loose clot is stabilized by factor 13, which cross-links uh, the glut glutamines and lysines on the side chain, certain, certain glutamines and lysines on the side chain. So here's a glutamine and a lysine, and here is the cross-link that's formed using factor 13A and transglutaminase and calcium. Von Willebrand disease, it's the most common clotting problem. Von Willebrand factors a glycoprotein that prevents, that helps platelets clump. Remember, Von Willebrand factor binds right down here to the collagen, helps the platelets bind to the collagen. Has no enzymatic activity. It also carries and protects factor VIII. So if you're deficient in, fa in Von Willebrand factor, you probably have less factor VIII around as well. So that's another problem you have for clotting. It's equally prominent in men and women. Uh, you see bleeding with dental work. Aspirin aggravates the problem. Endothelial cell secre uh, secretes uh, von Willebrand factor into the plasma. It is a multimeric protein of various sizes and recombinant von Willebrand factor was uh, first made in just last year in 2015. And von Willebrand disease, there are two types, type 1 and type 2. Type 1 is the predominant one, the most common forms. Both are autosomal dominant traits. An autosomal dominant trait so here's the father, has one affected gene. He's going to 
<clears throat> and because he has that one affected gene, he's going to give that one gene to his, uh, and it's in his, uh, it's uh, probably, it has to be his X gene since he, uh, uh, his daughter also gets it and she carries it and he has an affected son and or, or an affected daughter. He can also have a normal unaffected son or a normal unaffected daughter. But because only one gene, one bad gene is enough, half his children will have, will have this problem. So one bad gene is enough. So mutation in one subunit interferes with a multimer formation. So it's an autosomal dominant problem. Factor eight deficiency. I previously told you that factor eight is hemophilic, hemophilic factor. And it is a deficiency of this is responsible for hemophilia A. And there are about one in 5,000 uh, hemophilia A people. Normally, prothrombin gets activated by factor 10A to form thrombin. Once thrombin is formed, then some thrombin will convert factor eight into activated factor eight that speeds up this whole process. So it's a feedback activation to put on the accelerate this at the point of where the clot's being formed. And so we get limited proteolysis of eight uh, by thrombin, activate it and accelerate the factor 10 activation is how it works. Uh, oops. Go back a second. Uh, we have recombinant forms of this now, so the disease can be uh, treated. Here's the recombinant forms. You don't need to know these names. Uh, years ago, uh, blood products uh, from uh, isolated from lot, large pools of blood from individuals were used to make fact to make a factor eight. Uh, fraction that was used to treat hemophilia back then and consequently a number of children developed HIV because they before they had testing for HIV. Now Queen Victoria uh, was a carrier for hemophilia B which is an excellent also an X-linked and uh, the royal families would only marry other royals. So uh, a lot of her children uh, that carried the disease, she's a carrier right here. She, her, she was married to Prince Albert. And uh, so Victoria, uh, some of her children like Alice married Louis IV. Uh, and Louis IV then uh, had a daughter named Al Alex or Alexia that married Nicholas II of Russia and then they had a little child a little boy named Alex that was and several daughters uh, he was the heir to the throne but uh, and he because he was a weakly looking little kid uh, people lost faith in the in the, the king in, in the, uh, the czar as he was in Russia and so a quint essentially there was a uh, revolution in Russia and all the children uh, were assassinated and notice that a number of these uh, children a lot of the boys uh, died at early ages age 4 age 0 age 56 33 23 32 31 19 so a number of them it also affected the uh, Spanish side of the family too and uh, but notice that uh, King uh, that Philip and Elizabeth did not carry the, the gene nor does William or Harry now here is a picture of little Alexis and he was a very sickly kid and of course the the daughters uh, didn't have it nor did their father and so it's an x-linked recessive so the mother's the carrier and uh, so uh, affected sons carrier daughters unaffected boys and girls as well now Victoria had nine children and several married other European royals which spread the hemophilia gene hemophilia B, B is also called Christmas disease after Stephen Christmas the first patient and because the first report of it was published in the Christmas edition of the British Medical Journal. Hemophilia B is fairly rare, one in 30,000 males, which involves a non-functional truncated form of factor 9. Recombinant tissue plasminogen activator has been used. I told you that plasminogen is a blood plasma zymogen that gets activated by TPA to make plasmin, and then plasmin dissolves the fibrin clot to peptides. 
This recombinant form is called Activase, and it was originally designed to treat myocardial infarction, but it's also used to uh, treat ischemic uh, stroke and massive pulmonary embolisms. You can see a blood clot in the heart here that has stopped this blood vessel. After treating with TPA, it gets opened up. So tissue plasminogen activator is, and it's a recombinant. Uh, Genentech developed it many, several years ago, and it's still being used mainly, I think, now to treat uh, ischemic strokes that are due to blood clots. So the end. Nothing great was ever achieved without enthusiasm. Ralph Waldo Emerson. Thank you.